All right. I guess I'm live. I don't know how long I'm going to do this for today. I'm just uh, kind of hanging out. I uh, thought I'd do a couple like examining of claims and like, um, okay, so we're going to go. That's what we're looking at. Duck, duck, go. Uh, so one of the claims that's been around on the internet this week has been, uh, well, actually, I guess before I do that, before I start getting too into this, let's fucking share this Twitter shit. Just started streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash skeptical leftist. Looking at some fact finding about internet topics and editing the new interview episode. Interview episode. Wait. Um, Okay, where am I here? Right there. All right, we're right there. Okay, so one of the claims that's been going around lately is this uh, this claim about the what do you call it? The gas stoves. So we're gonna we're gonna say is the U.S. banning gas stoves? Question mark. Enter. Okay, so CNN first article that comes up. U.S. permanently to to permanently ban gas stoves. This is one link. Uh, tell me best. What is this? MSN? This doesn't look very official. <laughs> Story by Christy Eckert. Okay. It was posted one hour ago as a debate over electric vehicles and big government push for society to transition to them continues to rage. Another electric versus gas related debate has spawned. The debate centers around gas stoves and whether or not they should be banned in the United States. Uh, scientific evidence has re-emerged to suggest that gas stoves emit harmful chemicals that could negatively impact an individual's cognitive performance and health. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, the news that gas stoves can be potentially harmful to a person's health is actually not news at all. Wired reported that scientists have collect. Let's open that link. Open link in a new tab. Can I? Uh, so I gotta, I gotta switch tabs. Hey, okay. if I want to go to that one, yeah. Um. So this is, this so this uses a, a Wired article as a source, as well. Um, let's see. So I've opened that in another tab. We'll check that out after. Reported that scientists have collected evidence in the past that revealed the toxicities associated with gas stoves. Eric LaBelle, who has a, is a sci senior scientist at PSE Healthy Energy and who has done extensive research related to chemicals emitted from gas stoves, has previously outlined the potential negative effects. And this looks like a public what is that? Uh, let's say share this tab instead. This is uh, composition, emissions, and air quality impacts of hazardous air pollutants in unburned natural gas from res residential stoves in California. So that's an actual like uh, study about the dangers of gas stoves. So far, we haven't actually approached the um, are gas stoves being <laughs> being banned yet. I haven't uh, I haven't hit that yet. Continue reading. Okay, where am I? Yes, okay, yeah, okay. I, I get it. it's harmful. It's probably not even that controversial to say that it's going to be it's harmful. Gas stoves, if you're just putting gas into the air and you're not burning burning the gas, and even if you are burning the gas, I'm sure there's plenty of chemicals in the air because of it. Uh, I don't I don't find this hard to believe at all. A study published by RMI in December of 2022 found that 12.7% of, of asthma cases in children have been linked to gas stoves in homes. That's pretty high. <laughs> can have the same effect as a person living it with a heavy cigarette smoker. It's not just a climate or health concern, but it's both at the same time. Okay. But is the, is, but is the government banning gas stoves? Okay, let's go back to the search. Looks like from... Intelligencer, the gas stove ban freakout is the story we need right now by Margaret Hartman. Last summer, at a time when the news cycle traditionally slows to a crawl, sharks, what, when does this come out? This came out January 13th, okay. Sharks helpfully started nibbling on people off the coast of Long Island. No one was seriously injured, and the extensive local news coverage gave us the non-political to gab about at pool parties and the like. But what are we supposed to talk about this January? <laughs> Because there's there's no injustice going on. There's no uh, there's no fucking uh, 
war. There's no bullshit out there in the world. It's just um, uh, <laughs> very silly, very silly way to phrase that. But uh, maybe she, be, the uh, writer, is doing that on purpose. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to accuse them of being uh, disingenuous. What are we supposed to talk about this January? Uh, answer the great gas stove ban freakout of 2023. Okay, so here, here we have a very clear statement. To be clear, Joe Biden is not plotting to go door to door, ripping gas stoves out of Americans' kitchens, but some lawmakers are acting like he is, and suddenly none of us can stop debating the pros and cons of various cooking appliances. Yeah, no shit. I think we need to savor this story like a bowl of soup warmed on a, over a noxious blue flame. <laughs> this is a, a pretty well-written story, actually. This is a very, very good article. It's stupid and low stakes. Stupid, low stakes, aren't we talking about children's health? <clears throat> sort of. No one's actually issuing a federal ban on gas stoves at the moment. We've known about the alleged health issues related to gas stoves for years, and most of us aren't getting new appliances anytime soon. Yeah. The current dust-up was fueled by Richard Trumka Jr., a U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commissioner. Uh, oh, a remark that Trumka made about gas stoves in Bloomberg News interview this week. Uh, saying this is a hit and hazard. Any option is on the table. Products that can be made safe can be banned. <gasps> oh, excuse me. That can't be made safe can be banned. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I'm not a, I'm not exactly a big government guy, but like if uh, if something's dangerous and I mean the system exists to uh, either eliminate things or ban them if they aren't healthy or they aren't good for people. Um, I mean, if you're if you're out here arguing that uh, you you should have the freedom or right to uh, main keep <laughs> to be unhealthy, I mean, uh, I guess sure, but why would you want to? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. But it doesn't sound like they're actually trying to planning to ban it anyway. <clears throat> the only specific action mentioned in the piece is the CPSC's plan to open public comment on hazards posed by gas stoves later this winter but no one had time to consider these details. Lawmakers were already preparing to fight, maybe to the death, question mark, <laughs> tongue, tongue firmly in cheek, to keep Biden from seizing their stoves. Uh, Ronnie Jackson tweets, I'll never give up my gas stove. In the if the maniacs in the White House come for my stove, they can pry it from my cold, dead hands. <sighs> wow. Does any, I mean, uh, nobody's watching this at the moment, but I'm going to put this up on YouTube and just make, so if you, if, <laughs> are you this are you like this <laughs> are you a person who's like uh whose brain is so wormed <laughs> that you can't possibly like uh oh shit wrong button or that sorry sorry sorry, sorry. try and get this bigger <laughs> so um yeah i'll never give up my gas stove if the maniacs in the white house come from my stove like i just I thought it was ridiculous when, uh, what's his name, the old actor who played in all the Bible shows, said that about guns. But at least on some level, I get it. <laughs> this is just absurd. Like, this is just absurd. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Mm hmm. I am not looking to ban gas stoves and the USPSC has no proceeding to do so. Read my full statement at twitter.com. Okay. The president does not support banning gas stoves and the consumer product safety. So like, this is nonsense, right? Like this is not even a real thing that's actually happening. Somebody took a quote out of context and they were like, like, and it just became like this big fucking deal somehow. I'm kind of blown away a little bit by the way this kind of blew up, but it isn't entirely surprising. I remember, you know, uh, right wingers burning their Nikes or throwing their Keurigs out of the fucking windows. I've been making fun of this shit for years on various podcasts and whatnot. Let's look at uh, another article here. We'll bring up. Uh... All right. This is from popular science. Despite fiery debate, Biden isn't banning gas stoves in the U S this came out on the 13th. This is three days ago now. Um, <laughs> For a while now, gas stoves have come under heat for their health and environmental impacts. So this is this is well established in in various ways. Uh, gas stoves are not great, actually. Like I get that. Uh, I get that. Like you personally want to keep your gas stove 
because uh, I, I, not you personally, maybe who uh, random viewer slash listener, but these guys that uh, they talk shit to, like on Twitter, these politicians and right wing pundits who are all hacks, by the way, all of them are hacks and they're all dishonest. I don't I don't know. There's not much to say about that. It's just the way it is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. C- CPSC is researching gas emissions in stoves and exploring new ways to address health risks. CPSC is also act also is in, actively engaged in strengthening voluntary safety standards for gas stoves. And later this spring, we will be asking the public to provide us with information about gas stove emissions and potential solutions for reducing any associated risks. Gas stoves can produce and emit dangerous levels of carbon monoxide, methane, benzene, and and nitrogen nitrogen dioxide benzene is uh is a thing that we talk a lot about in uh my industry i work in oil uh we don't at, at the facility i work at we don't actually have a lot of benzenes but it is always a concern uh you do get it typically from more processed uh kind of oil or gas based uh products like gasoline has a lot of benzenes in it like uh so you don't want to be breathing the gas that's coming out of your uh out of your uh gas tank while you're filling your gas it's not it's not good for you uh sorry just got a message apparently this is okay when you're streaming right because uh, i will definitely have to get back to him on that um uh, yeah so benzene's is a thing that that you worry about like it can it can cause cancer and it can cause uh if i remember correctly uh they talk about like Uh, It can have various respiratory uh, issues like uh, emphysema and shit like that. You don't want to, you don't want to be breathing in too much for benzenes. Don't, don't be breathe, keep, don't stick your nose near the the nozzle when you're uh, pumping gas into your car. (laughs) But yeah, apparently gas stoves can also produce dangerous levels of carbon monoxide. So that's, I guess, a thing. Well, let's, uh, let's go back. We'll see what else there is here. Uh, U.S. Homeandgardens.com. Okay. <laughs> U.S. ban on gas stoves. What you need to both need to know about the controversial pr- proposal. <laughs> <laughs> I love headlines. Like, I just love that shit because the previous two articles just said straight out, like the, the white house has said, they're not doing this. Uh, the guys who are in charge of like, health and safety or whatever the cpsc they're saying well we're not actually trying to ban anything like we're talking about the potential risks um so i mean and it's again seems like the risks like the health issues are pretty straightforward this isn't like super controversial the evidence is well established it's well researched but okay Anyway, gas stoves are a staple in many kitchens. Due to a link between harmful gas stove emissions and respiratory illnesses across the U.S., there is a movement to ban the appliances inside. Is there? Is there? (laughs) Because nobody else seems to think so. When designing a kitchen, the decision between a gas stove and an electrical model has previously been left to purchase preference. But under the new proposals, gas stoves could be banned from sale in the not-so-distant future. Which proposals? Because nobody said that. The move comes after a 2022 study. Okay, so yes, this is just again talking about the, uh, here, I'm going to open this up in a new tab. We'll just take a quick pee to get this, like, um, go, okay. Let's accept your cookies. Population attributable fraction of gas stoves and childhood asthma in the United States. The the other article said that uh, it was 12.7% of asthma cases in California were potentially attributable to uh, gas stoves. So indoor gas stove cooking is associated with an increased risk of current asthma among children and is prevalent in 35,000%. <laughs> That's a lot of percent. 35% of households in the US. Uh, the population level implications of gas cooking are largely unrecognized. We quantified the population attributable faction, fraction for gas stove use and current childhood asthma in the US. Effect sizes previously reported by meta-analysis for current asthma, odds ratio equals 1.34 or 95% confidence or interval, were utilized at the PAF esti- estimations. The proportion of children exposed 18, under 18 years exposed to gas stoves was obtained from the American Housing Survey for the U.S. and states. 
we found that 12.7% of childhood, uh, current childhood asthma in the U.S. is attributable to gas stove use. So that's that's the article, that's the study that everybody seems to be uh, talking about. So in a letter to the chair, Alex Hohen Sarek, a group of lawmakers, determined that short-term exposure, exposure to NO2 is linked to worsening asthma in children, and long-term exposure has been determined to likely cause the development of asthma. Oh. <laughs> uh, hello, non-sequently. Yeah, uh, the <laughs> the gas stove movement. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if it's much of a movement, uh, right? Like <laughs> like no, nobody's doing this. Like it's just a thing that somebody got outraged about. Uh, but apparently, the the evidence is pretty strong. Hello, some random geek. Thanks for joining me. Um, so these uh, these emissions can create a cumulative burden. Uh, to households that are already more likely to face higher exposure or both to both indoor and outdoor air pollution. Okay. But, this is like the fourth article I've gone through that says like gas stoves are kind of dangerous. They're not the best. So I'm pretty solidly on board with this. Uh, but are, are, is the government banning them? That's the question. <laughs> is, is the U.S. government trying to, to ban this? Uh, so abcnewsgo.com, .go.com. Uh, let's see. I'll try and blow that up again. <laughs> yes, people are not, in fact, rising up against the gas stoves. It's very strange that this is a thing. That <laughs> I don't know why. Um, yeah, uh, I got something wrong here. I think the chat should be appearing in the fucking window, but it's not for some reason. Something I'll have to figure out later, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. This is very, very, it's a very funny little debate for me. <laughs> like, like the first article I read kind of said like, ah, yes, well, uh, oh, I can't even remember what it was, but it was very well written. I, I will share links in the, the show notes, I guess, when I post this on YouTube, just to say like, yeah, this is, these are the various articles that we've gone through. Um, but yeah, fact focus, Biden administration isn't banning gas stoves. This is from ABC News. Uh, following comments made by a member of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, misleading claims that the Biden administration is planning on banning gas stoves have wi spread widely across social media platforms this week. No shit. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, the Biden administration has come under fire this week due to overcooked fears. Over well, well, good word to use there. Very, very well written. I appreciate that. <laughs> the claim was sparked by comments from the CPSC official. Uh, published Monday that any option is on the table when it comes to regulating gas stoves and amid growing health concerns over the appliances. <clears throat> In the days after discussion of on, yeah. <laughs> uh, In the days after discussion online evoked images of the government dragging four burner cooktops from homes as social media users shared memes of gas stoves with text like don't tread on me. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't particularly feel like my freedoms are being infringed upon. Uh, if I can't use a gas stove, I've been using electric stoves for years. <laughs> People are in fact, so dramatic. It's so absurd. <laughs> it's just, I, I, uh, there was the one tweet where the guy says you can pro pry my gas stove from my cold dead hands. And I just, I abs it's hilarious. That's that's some hilarious shit. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about this. It's it's quite it's a, it's a big joke, right? Like somebody thought, well, this is a way to get random people <laughs> I have suffered from the oppression of my electric stove for many a year. Yeah. Well, I would almost I would almost say that uh electric stoves are more freedom. <laughs> Can you can you use a, a a gas stove for the same diverse number of things? Uh, like, it, can a gas stove be a shelf for things that you just need to place somewhere while you're doing other things on the counter? I, I don't know. It seems like pretty hard to do that with with these weird shaped uh, burners from gas stoves. <laughs> 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 yeah it's uh so yeah that's i'll go back again i i think i've gone through one two three four that's the fifth article 
reading this and no, like I say, I'm using DuckDuckGo. Uh, I just did a quick Google search. Is the U.S. banning gas stoves? Because DuckDuckGo doesn't do the algorithm thing like Google does. <laughs> I, um, I would love using a gas stove, but somehow I would survive if it wasn't an option for me. Yeah, no, yeah. I, like I've never actually, we have one at work actually. A funny thing is like, I don't know how to turn it on. <laughs> I've never used it. I've never had a need to because I've always used electric stoves and everything I cook at work actually is actually just microwave food. So yeah, gas stoves. It's the big, it's the big deal of the day. Um, I think. So what other, what other nonsense was there on claims? Was there on the internet this week? I think I had one that I think, I think I've well established the fact that nobody is banning gas stoves, but also like, <laughs> but also gas stoves aren't the best actually it turns out they're not the greatest for health and uh and, and that's kind of a, a a big deal but but i mean if 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 people want to risk their health uh just because they want to cook on a stove I, I guess that's up to them right like what do you do like ban it i guess is the is the thing um i'm gonna do this me and my partner were discussing this earlier today uh it was okay i'm gonna Go in here. I'm gonna say, um, what is the what was the thing? Uh, blood types are different. Blood types more common among different ethnicities. Ethni ethnicities. <sighs> Can't spell ethnicities. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I saw they had a lot of stuff on sale on uh, at AK Press. I I ordered uh, the Revolution by the Book hat, uh, which was back ordered, unfortunately. And I got my uh, uh, my I got a signed copy of uh, After the Revolution <laughs> by uh, Robert Evans. So then I, but then somebody from Regina works at AK Press, so they threw this hat into the mix for free for me. So that was, that was pretty cool of them. So the, uh, are different blood types more common among different ethnicities? This morning, I was quite certain that this was not the case, that you would find a pretty even distribution of, uh, blood types among various people across the world and in different. Yeah. Um, so I'll blow this up too. Oh yeah. It went for a few from there. Oh, nice. Nice. I'm, I'm, uh, signed up as the, uh, you know, I'll remove that for now. I, I'll, I signed up as one of the friends of AK Press so that every month I, I get a couple books or whatever and uh, like a digital copy of like every book they've pr published that month. So I find that I, I, I really like it. I get more books than I can read. <laughs> and I'm thinking I might have to put it on pause for a little while so that I can catch up. But it's quite it's quite nice to have like new books coming. I love new books. It's like I love the the feel of a book. I should I should share them more. Give them to people who who need to read them. <laughs> yeah, it's I I know I can't. Some people I know read really fast, but I I can't keep up. So <clears throat> yeah. Um okay. So, what are the rarest and most common blood types? So, this is interesting stuff to me. I like I always find like medical science really interesting. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. AK press is a, it's a, they're a really good uh, little outlet. I think uh, it's very good to support them if we can, although we all can just do what we can. So <laughs> yeah, blood types are a classification of blood based on the antigens based on red blood cell present on red blood cells. Antigens are molecules that can trigger an immune system response. There are eight common blood groups, but 36 human blood groups in total. Uh, so, yeah, blood transfusion is a procedure that restores blood to the body, so on and so forth. This is the neat stuff. <laughs> so there's blood group A has A antigens. Blood group B has B antigens. Blood group O has A or B, or has neither no A or nor B, and AB has both. And then the RH system is the, uh, the, the whether or not it's positive or negative. And it has the RH antigen on the surface of the blood cell, supposedly. I don't know what this means exactly, but I know that that's what it says. <laughs> so, um, 
So this is, I was getting down into here where it says like, uh, the genes that a person inherits from their parents determine the mix of antigens and proteins in their blood. Due to this genetic factor, the American Red Cross suggests that when people need blood, especially those with rare blood types, the best matches tend to come from people with the same race or ethnic background, which I absolutely did not expect to be the case when I was looking this up this morning. I, uh, it's, it's interesting to me that, that, uh, but I guess it also makes sense in some ways. I think like genetics is, is really complicated and like medical science is really complicated stuff. So if you have things in common, then it, it helps to, yeah, I guess it helps at least uh, uh, for blood transfusions and whatnot. Inherited characteristics, characteristics such as blood types tend to run in ethnic groups. Right. So like you get your blood type from your parents, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was counterintuitive to me this morning, but <laughs> upon reading it, it makes, it does make sense. Uh, you get your blood type uh, from your parents and they get it from their parents. So if there's like a genetic component to it, or if there's like a, a little bit of similarity, then, then that places you within that, that group. Only 2% of donors have a rare blood type that doctors often use to treat sickle cell disease, but demand for it is increasing by 10 to 15% each year. The rarity of and demand for this blood type emphasize the importance of blood donors. Uh, yeah, so apparently, actually, uh, there's a shortage of uh, blood donors in various countries of uh, from uh, African descent. So like uh, black folks in France, for example, uh, there's very few uh, donors, blood donors. Uh, a lot of places, like I don't think in Canada, we even track the ethnicity, but because they're tracking the blood types and whatnot, they're testing all the blood to know exactly where they can, what it's supposed to do. Then you almost don't need to track ethnicity in, in some ways. But so according to the American Red Cross, the following statistics show the most common blood types in the U S African American, 47% O positive, 24% A positive and 18% B positive. So those are the most common types in the U S interesting. Okay. I don't know if I need to read all that, but yeah. This is just a little add on my, my main thing today was, uh, I was going to talk about the, the, the stoves, but then I also I looked this up on DuckDuckGo this morning because I thought there was a little bit of a disagreement this morning and I turned out to be incorrect. So it's good to update your knowledge <laughs> when, when you're shown to be wrong. So I don't know. Was there, oh, uh, what was the other thing I wanted to look up? <laughs> for fun just this isn't serious <laughs> yeah always good to do a fact check yeah, i appreciate that uh um yeah did m and m's go woke <laughs> all right so our first article from the street.com i don't know what this site is um this doesn't seem like m and m's once again rile up the far right over woke package a trolling campaign done gone very right. This was written on January 10th. <clears throat> the only reason I know about this is because that goof. Uh, oh, I guess I should share this. Hey, <laughs> that goof, uh, Nick Adams, he on Twitter, he was making a big deal out of uh, uh, the M&Ms are, are being like they had. Oh, no, they had women characters, lady characters. Uh, it's such a big deal. Right. It's, it's, it's really, really, we can't possibly deal with it. It's too awful. <laughs> There's a candy company that many on the right love to hate. It's M&M's currently under the fourth largest privately held company in the U S the Mars brand has been part of American food culture for more than 70 years. <laughs> Consumers don't just love the small candy coated chocolate themselves. Many also know and love the iconic characters, uh, blue neurotic, thoughtful, blue neurotic orange and sassy green. A year ago, M&M's listened to longstanding criticism about how the two female characters were obviously sexualized in older advertisements. Green and brown were sometimes presented as competing for the male M&M's while green would strike sexy poses. <laughs> sexy, sexy M&M's. That's, that's the deal. In January 2022, M&M's announced that it would be giving the M&M characters a new look, personalities, and backstories to be more aligned and representative to, of today's society. Some all new all-female M&M candy packs. Uh, 
feel like the right is having a slow news period or something. <laughs> really, they are really reaching. Like, like it, it's not even like these are stories. Like at least with the Nike thing, when when they all were burning their Nikes because Colin Kaepernick was the spokesperson. Like, I it, it's still nonsense, but I got it right. And like, but you always get these moments where they're like destroying their own shit or like uh, like the, when they threw their Keurigs out the window because whatever reason. <laughs> so, ah, uh, yes. Fox News host Tucker Carlson said that Eminem would not stop until every character was deeply unappealing and androgynous, and that equity would only be achieved when you are totally turned off. Because it's only candy if I'm sexually attracted to the mascot, right? Like, it's only good candy if I'm attracted to the mascot. There's no... There's no <laughs> it's just nonsense. Uh, Carlson's responses were mildly mocked, but also caused a flurry of media coverage for Mars and M&Ms. Then in September, the company announced that it was adding another color to the six candy lineup, a peanut M&M wearing combat boots and believing in acceptance and inclusivity. <laughs> yes, Tucker Carlson is uh, is easily the joke of humanity at this point. Like, I, I, I just don't. He's an absurd, absurd person. Um, purple was initially the only part of ads and online campaigns. <sighs> yeah. The idea that you can be against inclusivity and, uh, acceptance is pretty, pretty bizarre. This week, M&M's once again rattled conservative sensibilities by announcing the launch of a limited edition candy package featuring green, brown, and purple in an all female lineup. Okay. Yep. Oh, so it, you, are you supposed to flip it upside down? Is that what you're supposed to do with the package? <laughs> so that it says W and W? <laughs> I love this shit. <laughs> the m and spokes candies are riling up Fox News. Uh, okay, okay. that I, I think that's enough of that. <laughs> that's good stuff. Um, I think that that's it for me today, though. I got some editing to do, so... Uh, hopefully the new episode of, uh, or like the most recent interview with Justin will be out soon. And like, cause that was recorded back in November and we're about to do our second episode of, uh, red reviews. Thank you non-sequently. And thank you, uh, uh, some random geek for, for joining me for my very silly, very, very fun, uh, little stream. I'll, I'll, I'm hoping to be on again tomorrow. Uh, where I'm going to probably read some anarchist history if I can find something interesting to read. Have yourselves a good one.